Faye Lawan. I'm an internal conflict resolution expert. So what inspired you to become an internal uh, conflict resolution expert? Well, Michael, I get asked that a lot. And quite honestly, you know, it's need, it's necessity. You know, when I was growing up and at school and, uh, you know, teachers would ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? I never raised my hand and said, oh, I want to be an internal conflict resolution expert. You know, I didn't even know what that was. I didn't even know that was a thing. But my life journey through a series of burnouts and mental health issues and chronic conditions led me to so, to find long-lasting solutions for these conditions that didn't involve medication or meditation or talk therapy. And the more I dug into how to come out of these conditions naturally in a way that doesn't involve medication and has no side effects and is holistic and powerful and long-lasting and good for you, I realized that the only way to do that is re to resolve the internal mess, to resolve the internal chaos, to conquer the inner turmoil. And that's where internal conflict resolution comes in, because until we resolve the inner mess, the inner, the internal battles, whatever is troubling us internally on the inside, nothing is going to sort itself out on the outside. And I have to say that um, uh, once I figured that out, because, you know, I didn't have anybody to tell me that that's mm -hmm. what I needed to do. Once I figured it out and figured out how to do it. Right. Um things just completely resolved. And not only did the symptoms resolve and the mental health re issues resolve and the chronic conditions resolve, but also like life became uh, uh, more, more, um, more joyous, more easy. It flowed. There was more balance, more love. I fell in love. I built a beautiful relationship and a beautiful marriage. I moved to New Zealand. I changed career paths. I, um, you know, I kind of like my, my life reinvented itself according to an alignment with the vision I always had for my life. But my life couldn't have gone there back then because there was too much internal conflict. What is it like helping people get through what you went through? It is a privilege. It's an honor. It fills me with purpose and meaning and gratitude each and every single day. And every single day, you know, I have clients express so much gratitude and appreciation. And for me, it's such an honor to be able to do for people what I really, really, really needed for someone to do for me back then all those years ago when I was really sinking in the darkness, in the hole and didn't know how to come out unless I said yes to the, to the, to the medication and the talk therapy. And so it really feels like like living out my purpose, if that means, if that if that makes any sense, you know, it, it feels like I'm able to live out my calling. And there's a lot of gratitude that comes from being able to be in alignment with my calling and be in alignment with my purpose. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of people can't live their life that way. And a big part of it is is if you if you're if you are um uh, buried under a mountain of internal conflicts, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to live out your purpose. Because to live out your purpose, you need to be in a completely different part of your brain and your nervous system that's all about thriving and flourishing, right? And growth. But when your when your internal when your internal system is chaotic and has and conflicted and 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 messy your system is very much in a survival state and survival and flourishing don't go together. They're complete different neurological branches. And so, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say to me and just, you know, just generally out and about say, you know, that they're, that they're struggling to find their purpose. They feel directionless. They don't, they feel that their meaning does their life doesn't have meaning. And I mean, I get that. I was there as well. I was there as well. And what I'm here to tell anybody listening to this for which this message resonates is that it's not you that feels purposeless or meaningless. It's quite literally your nervous system, quite literally stuck in a place 
that where it cannot do meaning and purpose and direction. Because when our nervous system is so overwhelmed by internal conflicts that have got that have been unresolved, it goes to a, a shutdown place where not only things like biologically and medically start to go wrong, but also it completely zaps us from the joy of life, energy, ability to think clearly, to interact, to uh, to see meaning and purpose uh, in any area of our life. And the good news is because our nervous systems are so neuroplastic and our nervous systems actually are designed to help us thrive, not just survive. Once you start doing uh, the work to resolve these internal conflicts and to signal to the nervous system that things are okay, things quickly, quickly resolve, like really, really quickly resolve. You know, it took me 16 years to, uh, for my, um, for my conditions to come right and my symptoms to come right simply because I didn't know what I was doing. Like I was, I was literally making it up as I went along because 16 years ago when I had my first massive, massive burnout, which basically involved me passing out behind the wheel of a car um, and being petrified and not knowing what caused it and how to get out of it and, and going through one medical test after the other, after the other, after the other, until eventually the doctors diagnosed it as depression and PTSD. And the only solutions they put forward were medication and talk therapy. And I said no to, to both. Um, I started digging, you know, I started researching, I started finding a solution when one was not provided for me. And I didn't have a system. I didn't have a protocol. I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't have a coach. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have guidance. I didn't have accountability. I didn't have a community in order to help me do the stuff that can be done very quickly. And now the longest, 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 longest I ever work with anybody to help them really resolve this sticky stuff that has been there stubbornly for years and sometimes decades, the very longest is about three months. That's the absolute longest. And so usually I say, you know, like my proprietary system, the mental health blueprint, it helps you overcome poor mental health, uh, exhaustion and pain in three months or less without medication, without talk therapy, and also without meditation. Can you tell me about your blueprint? Hmm. With pleasure. So, so when I started studying 16 years ago about how to get out of this, you know, there's a lot of information out there about wellness. There's so many modalities and all of them have their place. All of them. CBT has its place. Psychotherapy has its place. Yoga has its place. Meditation has its place. EFT has its place. Tapping has its place. Um, uh, counseling has its place. Coaching, NLP, havening, clinical hypnotherapy, somatic sensing, iris, they all have their places. And I studied all of them, absolutely all of them. And and kind of like uh, um, uh, experimented with the bits, experimented on myself. It was trial and error. Eventually, eventually when it all kind of came together, I went back and I decoded the process I coded, not decoded. I encoded the process that worked for me and I started delivering it to others, right? And so it's a very integrative process that works on the body, the mind, the lifestyle, the emotions, the nervous system, and the subconscious mind. Because when you're, um, when you're living through these chronic conditions or these stubborn mental health symptoms, you know that that impacts your body, your mind, your emotions, your lifestyle, your nervous system, and your subconscious mind. And so you need a system that's integrative and works in the same way that the, pro that the problem shows up. And so the three-step blueprint is that it's integrative and, it, and the three steps are support the nervous system, overcome inner turmoil, and eliminate chronic stress. Now let's unpack each of those. And it's quite it's quite important. The sequence is quite important, right? So it took me a while to figure out the sequence. Like prior to encoding it this way, I had all of the elements, but the elements were kind of like, um, uh, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking at? Fluid. But really, because all of these chronic conditions and mental health issues 
stem from a dysregulated nervous system and a nervous system that is completely out of whack, we've got to start by supporting the nervous system. It's got to start there because all of these issues are nervous system issues. So you need to support the nervous system. What do I mean by that? I mean like first and foundationally is creating a felt sense of safety, not a safe idea, a safe haven internally, conceptually inside your mind. No, because that's not enough. It's actually teaching the body, teaching the biology, telling the biology that it is safe. Because the only reason that the nervous system went to those freeze places where chronic conditions and mental health issues arise is because there was a perception of lack of safety. Now, that lack of safety can either be like actual, like you're in a danger zone or like in a really like dangerous physical environment, or that lack of safety can come from a lack, a perceived lack of emotional safety. You know, you've never felt supported. Your needs haven't really been met. Um, you've been bullied a lot. You've been uh, in narcissistic relationships. You've been in abusive relationships. You feel you can't speak up. You feel your voice doesn't matter. Like anytime we feel emotionally unsafe, it triggers the same biology internally as if we our life is literally in threat and our life is in danger, our survival is in danger, right? Because the, the, the nervous system does not understand the difference between real and imaginary. So it produces the same biology as if our life is quite literally in danger. And that is, you know, for people in the West, in the modern West, that's the problem. It's the emotional lack of safety, not the actual lack of safety. I mean, I would say for most people, I know that a lot of people actually do have very real survival uh, threats in their environment. But I'm talking for, you know, the majority of people that we tend to deal with in our mental health clinics and facilities. So really, really, really important to teach the nervous system that it is safe and that it is now time to switch off the biology and the biochemistry of survival. L like you cannot overcome these conditions until that step happens. This is why people can stay in therapy for years, years. Mm -hmm. You know, they can go to yoga for years and do the meditation for years. You know, I'm sure you get a little better. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's not going to give you that long lasting recovery and that capacity to, you know, excel and flourish in your life until you get that piece right. So supporting the nervous system, we first place is we create a felt sense of safety, but then we need to regulate the biology, you know, regulate the circadian rhythms, regulate your sleep, really important, regulate, um, regulate, you know, like your, your, your diet, your relationship with alcohol, your relationship with sugar, your relationship with caffeine, because all of these things will definitely impact your, your symptoms. So really important to regulate the biology when we're looking to support the nervous system. And also equally importantly is to activate the body's inner calm, like to work with the relaxation response uh, regularly, daily, and consistently. Because see, the good news, the very, very good news about the nervous system, because it is the part of yourself that's there to help you survive and to help you thrive, it knows very quickly how to come out of these survival states. Because we're hardwired to do it. If yeah. animals can do it in the wild, so can we. And we have a more complex nervous system. But the problem is, Michael, that that we don't do it. Either we don't do it because we don't know we need to. We don't know how to read the signs of when we need to do it. We are too much in our heads. We don't know how to do it. We don't prioritize doing it. It doesn't matter what the reason is for not doing it, for not hitting that brake pedal in order for the system to reset, the, the, the end result is the same, that the system remains stuck in chronic stress and chronic survival. So the, the antidote to that is the relaxation response. Just like our nervous system is wired with a stress response to help us survive, it's wired with a relaxation response to help us thrive. And so it's really actually very simple. It's like the gas pedal and the brake pedal. If yeah. we drive a car on a on a motorway with the foot on the gas pedal only, you know, like eventually we're going to run into trouble. We'll run out of fuel. We'll crash. 
we'll hurt ourselves or hurt, hurt someone else. And it's the same thing internally with these stress responses. So in that summary, when we support the nervous system as the first step to the mental health blueprint, we're creating a thought sense of safety, we're regulating the biology, and we're learning uh, and, and, and implementing ways to activate the relaxation response or the body's inner calm. Once that's in place, you can start moving on to the second step, which is conquering the inner turmoil. Yeah. Now, conquering the inner turmoil is root cause therapy, basically, right? It's it's basically uh, figuring out what got the system into trouble in the first place. Like, why did the system go into survival mode? And switching it off and and changing the script, flipping flipping the script. And now this is this cannot be done at a conscious level because here's the thing: if we all knew what the problem was, none of us would have an issue because nobody wakes up in the morning and says, oh, you know what? I want to hold on to whatever happened in the past so that I have trouble with sleep and I hold on to my chronic pain and I have migraines and depression, anxiety, and burnout. Like Nobody wakes up and, and does that, not even a masochist. So, which begs the question then, why are so many people, despite all of the hours involved in talk therapies, why are these conditions still persistent? Why? It's because I'll tell you why. The reason why is because we're working at a completely different level at which these issues are created and stored. These issues are not created and stored by our conscious thinking brains, our conscious thinking minds. They're actually stored at a much deeper layer of mind, the subconscious and the deeper layers of mind. And so when we're working on conquering the inner turmoil, part of the piece there is working with the sub, like training your subconscious mind mastering your subconscious mind, learning about how it works, you know, because it works in a very different way to your conscious mind, but it runs the show. So learning about the about the subconscious mind, how to speak to it, how it's programmed, how you can reprogram it yourself. And then and then you um you uh identify the internal conflicts, you know, what were the issues, the the experiences, the adverse childhood experiences, the adverse life experiences, the overwhelming life experiences that led your system to freak out and to shut down and resolving those. It's not just identifying them, but it's resolving them at a deep level of mind. Going to um, journaling. I mean, I see so many um, trauma uninformed mm. interventions out there and it just freaks me out and it makes me so upset and so concerned because I think now there is a growing understanding out there that trauma is the root cause of all of our chronic conditions, right? And unless we resolve the traumas, those chronic conditions and addictions will persist. And so you see all of these interventions out there with trauma uninformed facilitators doing trauma uninformed interventions that at uh, at 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 the best will re-traumatize you. So it's not enough to you know talk about what happened or journal about what happened. That will not change the way that memory is stored internally inside your brain. The reason why these life experiences that have really been so traumatic and uh, internally turbulent for your system is because they have not been switched off and they haven't they haven't been appropriately appropriately stored in the part of the brain, the hippocampus, which is the appropriate memory centers for memories to be stored in so they're where they're not traumatic. So really the work is taking whatever happened, that was either traumatic or overwhelming or sudden or tragic or emotional, taking it out of the body where it gets stuck and stored and putting it in the hippocampus in the brain. And then once it's in the brain, it, it becomes neutral. Like you have a neutral, a neutral response to it. You know that it happened because you're not deleting memories. We can't delete memories, but you're re-scripting the way the memory is stored and the way the and the way the memory makes you feel, so that then when you think back to it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know it happened. It really sucked. It really sucked. But I'm not reliving it now in this moment as if it was real. Does that make sense? 
Yes, yes, and and so and so that's that's with the and part and then and then and then the next step of the uh, blueprint. Um, so we've had support the nervous system, conquer the inner turmoil, and then finally eliminate chronic stress. Now, you know, notice my change of my choice of language. I'm not saying managing stress because here's the thing: like stress isn't problematic. It's not. And you go to doctors, like very well-meaning doctors, very well-meaning. Oh, you know, they say, oh, you need to manage stress. Okay, well, you know, they tell you, do your breathing, go exercise, go out to nature, do yoga, download an app. Yeah, and those things are, they're wonderful. Like they're supportive, very important for a healthy lifestyle, but it's not going to cut it. And I, I mean, I know I hear it from my clients all the time. They do all the right things, but yet they're still stressed. Because the problem isn't stress. The problem isn't managing stress. The solution isn't managing stress. The solution is eliminating chronic stress. Eliminating the chronic churning of the chemistry and biochemistry of stress hormones. That's what's problematic. And that's what we need to eliminate, not even manage. And so when we're told that stress is a killer, that's bullock. Stress isn't, actually, stress is actually really good for you. You know, part of eliminating chronic stress, what I do with my clients is I empower them with the new research from the new science of stress from Stanford University and the research of Kelly McGonigal and her um, colleague Alia Alia Bloom, which now uncovers the miraculous benefits of stress when channeled and harnessed appropriately. And it also uncovers how we have multiple stress hormones, multiple stress responses, not just the one fight, flight, freeze, which we've been brainwashed and hypnotized to avoid and to demonize. So to recap, the three steps of the blueprint to help you overcome chronic conditions in three months or less without medication, meditation, and talk therapy are um, support the nervous system, conquer the inner turmoil, and eliminate chronic stress. So with that, you have such a great game plan to help others, but what do you do now to help your own mental health? Well, you know, because um, the, the, the old stuff has been cleared, you know, and this is what happens when we heal. We're able to meet the challenges that arise and the difficulties that arise and the adversities that arise in the moment, in the present moment without the charge from the past, right? So when <clears throat> when we work on our mental health and healing, as I said, we're not changing the past, but what we're doing is creating capacity for us to meet whatever is happening now so that we're not constantly triggered, so that we're not constantly ruminating, so that we're not constantly you know, expecting the worst case scenario. We can actually be present for our life circumstances and our life experiences. So, you know, like foundationally, I've created capacity to then help me with the other tools that are supported for my mental health. So I actually do things every single day for my mental health. And I'll tell you the top three, which are non-negotiables. So my digital discipline, like I am a ruthless Michael with the phone, like ruthless with the phone, social media, emails. And here's the thing that maybe your listeners know or need to be reminded of or may not want to hear you cannot, you actually don't stand a chance of creating robust mental health in today's uh, high-paced, overly stimulated life if you are constantly plugged in and if you yeah. don't do anything to actively to actively unplug and move away from your screens. Like, it's not going to happen. And the very, 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 very first thing that I do with my clients when they come to me as part of creating the safe space, as part of working on supporting the nervous system, I put them on a really strict plan, digital detox plan, where I provide them also with accountability to keep that alive in their lives. And Michael, can I tell you, after three days, only three days is all it takes. They all come back, all of them, they come back and they're like, I already feel like I'm sleeping better. I'm calmer. I have more patience. I can think more clearly. Uh, I have a better plan for my day. Of course you do, because if you're on that phone, when you're on that phone or checking emails or then you're immediately externalized, like you're immediately consuming the 
thoughts, the, the emotions, the plans, the agenda of someone else. So you've completely moved away from yourself and your needs and your internal resources. So that digital detox is everything. I mean, I even recently had a, six, a 16 year old work through my program. You know, a 16 year old, she was basically wired, you know, to technology. Yeah. And even the 16 year old, I mean, at first she struggled, but by the end, because I do exit interviews with my clients at the end, and she told me the piece that helped her the most with her recovery is the digital detox. This is coming from a 16 year old. So, the, so to answer your question, um, uh, non-negotiable is the digital detox. The other non-negotiable is I take, depending on how much time I have in the morning, at the very least five minutes, Some I aim for 20 to just sit in stillness and check in internally, you know, to like really kind of like check in with how I am. How am I? Like, how's my body feeling? How am I feeling? What's on my mind? You know, uh, how do I want the day to go? in contemplation, reflection, stillness. Sometimes it's in meditation because here's something else. When you take time, carve out time to be with yourself, to spend with yourself and to check in uh, you and to really acknowledge what's there and to allow what's there to be there, you can't do self-denial. Yeah. And one of the worst things, one of the worst things to get your nervous system into that chronic free state, chronic survival state is self-denial. You know, oh, pretend everything is okay. You know, uh, ignore your needs, ignore your values, ignore your beliefs, ignore your feelings. Eventually it will catch up with you. And so uh, spending time to actually welcoming everything in and just be with it. And so I call it stillness, contemplation, reflection, meditation, whatever it is, but just be. And then the other thing that is a non-negotiable for me is movement, like daily movement. And that that can vary. Some days it's a walk. Some days it's actually a hard session at the gym. Some days it's yoga. Some days it's Qigong. But like moving the body is so important because, I mean, now the science on um, on movement and exercise is so conclusive about its uh, very positive impacts on the brain and, uh, and mental health. Um, you know, it secretes endorphins. It secretes a neurotransmitter called an and and I've been fascinated by it, but I can't pronounce it. And ah, anandahide, which is basically, you know, like that bliss hormone. So it, it it makes us feel feel good. It moves tensions out of the body. It um moves lymph around around the body. It uh, it and, and you know when 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 you're free of tension, you're actually more able to relax and you're more able to be yourself because. Tension and relaxation don't go together, right? <laughs> so there are so many benefits for uh, 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 so many benefits associated with movement. So my three non-negotiables daily are um, uh, digital detox, you know, time with myself in stillness, checking in with myself, and some form of movement. But but really, this is all based on the foundation of. Um, uh, freedom of internal conflicts, like having freed up, freed up capacity and resolve the inner turmoil. Because doing those three things alone, if there's a lot of internal mess and internal chaos, uh, will be helpful. But it won't take you, um, it won't take you the, the 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 full nine yards. So, how can people uh, reach out and learn more? So. Um, website, faylawan.com, uh, email, fay at faylawan.com. And then all my social media is um, just faylawan. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, and um, and Facebook. Uh, 